Oh gosh, I need to get a haircut and my beard cut. Hey, Sunny here. So a closure is the combination of a function bundled together with references to its surrounding state. Now, when I first started learning how to code, I'd heard about closures, but I didn't really understand why people um, use them, uh, why they were useful and how I'd write one. Um, I had this kind of like vague idea that it has something to do with like inner functions and uh, like things like that. But, you know, again, I didn't really understand why it was useful. What I'd like to do instead is show you a couple of practical examples of closures in action so that you can better understand why people find them to be so powerful or better yet, why they are so powerful. Um, and along the way, we'll explain what a closure is doing. And one thing I want you to remember as we go through these examples is that a closure gives you access to an outer function scope from an inner function. And this is super important to understand. So one powerful feature of closures is that if you use them in the right way, you can create private values within functions. Um, so if you've seen one of the previous videos that we did on factory functions, we were basically just using closures to be able to, to do that. So what we'll do is we'll quickly have a look at the function that we used in the previous video. Um, so you'll see on the screen at the moment, we've got a player factory, um, which takes in a parameter of name. Uh, and the, the function itself though, doesn't return the name as uh, like a value on the object, but rather it just returns a get name function that returns the name if you call that function. Now the kind of closure of the private value here is that if you were to try and uh, access that name by using kind of dot notation or something like that. Uh, so on the screen you can see we've got sunil equals player factory. Uh, but then if we were to try and then afterwards put sunil dot name, it would return undefined. Now we know that we gave uh, our play factory uh, a name when we when we use that function so the only way to get it is through sunil.getName uh, and by doing that we have kind of created this private environment for the name to exist uh, and the useful part of that of course is the fact that it means that we can't just update that name anymore because we have used closures to create a private space the second way in which closures can be powerful is through their ability to be able to persist information when the function was originally called. You typically see this in action whenever you see a function that then returns another function. There might be some logic or information that kind of sat before the function returned the function, and that information is what gets persisted through closure. So I've created this kind of uh, quiz generator uh, this function that then returns another function. Uh, we'll put it up on the screen at the moment and you'll see that although I've kind of taken out a lot of logic in the quiz, just to simplify it for this example, the quiz takes in an array or the, the generate quiz function takes in an array uh, and then returns a function. And that function it returns is basically the quiz whereas the kind of outer bit is almost like the, the generator. So then if we take that generate quiz function and assign it to a variable called footy quiz, uh, and then we pass in an array uh, into the function. So in this case, we'll pass in an array of teams who have won the Champions League in football. Um, we then can just start using that footy quiz variable um, by just calling it as a function every single time. And when we do, we can just pass in a guess uh, uh, into the function. So you'll see with the first function call, uh, we pass in Liverpool and that console logs out correct guess. Um, then the second time we try it and we call and we put Arsenal in there, it returns incorrect guess because Arsenal have never won the Champions League. So there we go. Okay, and there we have it. So that was two examples of how to use closures in JavaScript. I hope that uh, through seeing these examples, you feel a little bit better about understanding what a closure is, uh, how you'd use one, and ultimately why it's useful. 
And remember that in JavaScript, closures are created just every time you create a function. So there's no special thing that you need to do to create a closure. And as always, if you found this video useful, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all that good stuff that people do on the internet. Um, and if you have any ideas for upcoming topics that you'd like me to break down um, and dissect, then be sure to leave a comment in the, in the below thing uh, with your ideas. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.